Hello and welcome to the weekly reading. I'm Charlie. So nice to have you join us as we learn and grow together with some pretty amazing books. And here we are with uh, fresh updates and things like that. Um, I've got a document camera now so you can follow along that way. You can listen in or you can watch the YouTube video. It's totally up to you, whichever way you prefer joining us and learning and growing with us. We're currently reading The Secret Power of Yoga by Nishla Joy DeVee and You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. Um, I'm going to start out the weekly reading with The Secret Power of Yoga and then I'm going to move to Louise Hay's You Can Heal Your Life. Now, normally I read the entire chapter um, during the weekly reading, but this week in Louise Hay's book, there's a whole list of of things and I will show you guys that and we'll just go over a few of those things because there's literally like 50 pages of the list so I'm going to read about the list and then we'll go over some of the things on the list okay um but I do encourage you to pick up your own copies um from your favorite bookstore and follow along all right I'm going to go ahead and change over to the document camera and we will get started. All right. We are on chapter eight of um, the secret power of yoga this week. And chapter eight is Hatha yoga, Hatha yoga. Okay. I'm going to try to help my camera out here. There we go. And right there, that looks good. All right, and let's go ahead and get started. Chapter eight, Hatha Yoga, harmonizing body, breath, and senses. We now experience how the outward harmony of body, breath, and senses reveals our inner nature. The natural comfort and joy of our being is expressed when the body becomes steady, asana. As the body yields all efforts and holdings, the infinite within is revealed. Thereafter, we are freed from the fluctuations of the gunas. The universal life force prana is enhanced and guided through the harmonious rhythm of the breath, pranayama. The movement of the life force is influenced by inhalation, exhalation, and sustained breath. A balanced rhythmical pattern steadies the mind and emotions, causing the breath to become motionless. As a result, the veils over the inner light are lifted. The vista of higher consciousness is revealed, encouraging the senses to draw inward is prachahara. Glimpsing the inner light, the senses contentedly dwell within. Sutra 2.46, the natural comfort and joy of our being is expressed when the body becomes steady, asana. Sutra 2.47, as the body yields all efforts and holdings, the infinite within is revealed. Sutra 2.48, thereafter, we are freed from the fluctuations of the gonas. The yama and niyama enable us to model the attitudes of golden age consciousness. We now venture to the next three facets of Ashtanga yoga, known as Hatha yoga. Their positioning after yama and niyama suggests that embracing a high level of behavior before beginning asana practice protects us from misusing or wasting the very powerful energy that is released. When we are firmly grounded in these principles, they unseemingly, any unseemingly thoughts or emotions are neither exacerbated nor strengthened. Hatha, balance of energies. The complete system of Hatha Yoga increases vital energy by aligning our physical and subtle bodies. 
through physical poses, asana, guiding and enhancing the life force through breathing practices, pranayama, and encouraging the senses inward through deep relaxation, prachahara. All three aspects were designed to be practiced in concert, thereby harmonizing body, breath, and the senses. When popularized in the West, the physical postures were isolated, including the other two aspects of Hatha yoga almost completely. This oversight can encourage imbalances and injuries to the body, as well as to the mental and emotional well-being. Today, I would always joke. Most people commonly refer to the isolated practice of asana as the total system, simply calling it yoga. Hatha represents the integrated energy that then polarizes within each of us a light and dark, sun and moon, masculine and feminine. Ha represents the sun, heating and masculine qualities of the of reason and intellectual thinking, while tha characterizes the moon, cooling and feminine qualities of emotional and intuitive feelings. Each one of us have both the male ha and the female tha within us in varied proportions. The finer the balance, the more harmonious we feel. When describing asana, Sutra 2.46 uses two Sanskrit words, sitra and sukha, or sthira and sukha. Sthira denotes an effortlessness while coming into the pose or posture, holding it or coming out of it. Sukha reflects the natural state of comfort and joy. As the body finds its ease, the mind and emotions align with it, reflecting the light of the divine. It allows us the feelings of being comfortable in our own skin. The inner and outer worlds interconnect. The placement of the sutras on Hatha Yoga suggests they are a preparation for sitting meditation. Aching bodies distracted the ancient yogis in their quest to sit still, unable to dedicate their focus inward, they realized that settling the mind was unlikely if even the slightest distraction remained in the body. By practicing a few simple poses before sitting, you encourage a sense of comfort and ease in the body. The mind calms and the spirit is more readily assessed. After all, a certain amount of discipline and physical strength is needed to keep the body in a steady seated position without any movement for a half hour or longer. Through asana practice, distractions of the body become infrequent visitors. The result is that we feel better, look better, and can project that feeling into our daily life. The practice of asana encourages the body, mind, and breath to function together. The mind first decides on the movement and then directs the energy, the physical body, given the blueprint, follows much of our pain, stiffness, and disease is caused by the low quantity or impeded flow of energy in the body and mind. Rhythmical bre breathing coordinated with this movement releases blockages and allows energy to flow. Holding the breath gives our nervous system a distress signal that is then sent to the organs, glands, and the muscular system. When it is flowing normally and rhythmically, the breath distributes energy through pathways, which encourage relaxation and the ability to stretch further. Along with bringing ease to the body, the practice of asana was intended by the sadhus or spiritual seekers to prepare their bodies for the intense physical rigor that was a fact of their lives. It was a very different time and culture from ours. When the practice of asana traversed the world, the need to adapt the poses for Western bodies became apparent. For example, from childhood to old age in most Asian countries, 
People commonly sit in a simple cross-legged pose. For them, it is quite comfortable. If we, at age 30, 40, or 50, try to adapt that same principle pose, our knees may complain for days or longer afterward. When the adaptations are not heated, we find the asanas difficult to do well and often, and the benefits will be overshadowed by frustration or injury. The feminine uniqueness. It is also an important dis distinction to note that the asanas were designed for the needs of a male body. A woman's body and her emotional makeup have unique qualities that need special attention. Many of the poses need to be adapted to the female body, yet our special needs are ignored if we follow traditional asana instruction rather than our intuition. While gentle pressure and squeezing help to improve blood circulation and health, too vigorous bending and stretching can harm the softer and less muscular female body. I would always joke with my students when teaching the Mayurasana or peacock pose. In this pose, the entire weight of the body is balanced on bent arms as the elbows push into the belly so the straightened legs can be raised into the air. In order to accomplish this pose, the balance point must be at the center of the body, the elbows being the fulcrum. But the female pelvis is bigger and heavier than a man's making the center of gravity lower. So if adhering to the traditional instructions, the elbows are pushed into the abdomen, most women would fall forward and flat on their faces when they raised their legs. By pushing the elbows into the pelvis rather than the abdomen, we are more easily able to balance. However, while the elbows against the pelvis enable us to do the pose, they can put too much pressure on the delicate organs housed there injury or an imbalance can occur. Since the position mimics a peacock, male, with long tail feathers splayed, I suggest women do a vision I call peven, peehen pose, in which the legs are folded and tucked underneath the belly. In this way, the center of gravity shifts and the pose is accomplished. The mental, emotional, and energetic aspects of asana can be as great, if not greater, than the, the physical aspect. When the mind images the benefits of a pose, the energy moves more easily to that part. When we receive maximum benefits from the practice, a relaxed, healthy body and mind, all this stretching leads us to a supple body of health and strength that is able to be active as well as to sit perfectly still. On an emotional level, a woman's sensitivity often shifts to more of a masculine ha if she continually takes on challenges and engages in competition. Instead of experiencing feelings of compassion when confronted with a situation, we may first exhibit anger. Because of the emphasis placed on our more masculine side, our feminine qualities are depleted instead of enhanced. Both aspects need to be honored. Today, there are hundreds of methods and schools for practicing yoga poses. Choose the type of asana you want to practice, based not just on the physical benefits, but also on how it will affect your emotional makeup. It is essential to understand what type of practice your particular temperament requires. Also, be aware of the effect of the practice is having on the subtle nervous system. If your nervous system is sensitive and you adapt a vigorous asana practice, it may cause an imbalance. Allow asana to be one part of your complete hatha yoga practice. As the practice is established, it affords flexibility of body, mind, and emotions. With this comes balance and the yearning to be still and know yourself. The body itself is to reveal the light that's blazing inside your presence, Rumi. The natural comfort and joy of our being is expressed when the body becomes steady, asana. 
As the body yields all efforts and holdings, the infinite within is revealed. Thereafter, we are freed from the fluctuations of the gonas. Experiencing how the thought influences the flexibility of the body. Choose two asanas that you are familiar with. One that you can do with ease and love and one that is a little more challenging for your body. Begin to practice the one you love and notice why you like it. Is it because you are proficient at it or does it just feel good? Notice how the mind and the feelings react after you have finished. Invoke the same happy feeling that came to you during an asana you love. Hold that feeling and transpose it on the other asana. If the mind starts to move into, I cannot do this well, I really do not like the way this one makes me feel, then bring the mind back to the happy feeling. Soon you may experience a release replaced by a feeling of comfort and ease of the body that is just a few moments, that just a few moments before had seemed impossible. Sutra 2.49, the universal life force prana is enhanced and guided through the harmonious rhythm of the breath, pranayama. The movement of the life force is influenced. Excuse me, let me back up. Sutra 2.50. The movement of the life force is influenced through inhalation, exhalation, and sustained breath. Inhabiting and surrounding each cell of our body is a universal energy called prana, this energy is named Ki in Japan and Chi in China. Everything in the natural world has a field of energy surrounding and circulating through it. At different times, the quality and quantity of prana may vary. For example, a tree in winter would have less circulating prana than a tree in springtime. There is more energy needed for a tree to flower than to exist in the dormant stage. Prana is the intelligence that responds to the varying needs. Prana is similar to electricity in that it supplies an invisible current to keep life flowing and functioning. At birth, we are allotted a quantity of this precious vital energy that continuously circulates, maintaining our function in daily life. Our first life-affirming action on this planet is to inhale, taking the precious atmosphere of the earth as well as a dose of prana. This action enlivens our bodies, making them suitable to sustain life in our new world. We then continue to breathe about 16 times a minute, hope hopefully for many years to come. At a certain time, very near the last beat of our hearts, we return the borrowed air we took in at the beginning with an exhalation and go on our way out of our body and to our next destination. In this way, a breathing body is considered to be alive and a breathless body is considered to be dead. What is often overlooked is that we are the indweller of the body, not the body itself. While a substantial portion of prana is allotted for daily use, a greater amount is put in trust until the time comes to further our quest to know the divine self. A vast capacity of prana is needed to raise the energy from the physical to the spiritual realms. This trust fund is safely stored at the base of the spine, most often known as the kundalini or coiled snake. Through the wide range of yogic practices, we slowly assess, access this energy as it guides us to deeper levels of consciousness. Our senses augment the already circulating prana through the beauty we see, the sounds we hear, the touch we receive, the fragrance we smell, the food we eat. The sun, the moon, the stars, thoughts, emotions, actions, and words all have the capacity to enhance or diminish our prana. The subtle nervous system. 
It is estimated that there are between 150,000 and 300,000 subtle pathways or nadis within and surrounding the physical body. The purpose of these nadis is to circulate and distribute the much needed energy to the physical, mental, and emotional bodies or koshas. The nadis function in a similar way to the blood vessels. Of the many thousand nadis, three are most significant. Ida, Pingala, and Shushum, Shushumana. The Pingala Nadi and the Ida Nali polarize the neutral energy as they wind around the spinal cord. The prana circulates through the Pingala Nadi, the Ha or the sun in Hatha, generating heat and the masculine attributes of rational thinking and intellectual reasoning. The pingala governs the sympathetic nervous system and corresponds to the left side of the brain. When prana circulates through the ida nadi, the tha or moon in hatha, it produces a coolness and accesses the feminine attributes of emotion, feelings, and intuition. Ida guides the parasympathetic nervous system and corresponds with the right side of the brain. The Shushumana Nadi only comes into play when the Pingala and Ida are in different, perfect harmony. It then has the sacred duty to carry the prana to the higher centers of consciousness or chakras. It does not function as the day-to-day -day distributor of energy to the physical, mental, or emotional bodies. The universal life force, prana, is enhanced and guided through the harmonious rhythm of the breath, pranayama. The movement of the life force is influenced by inhalation, exhalation, and sustained breath. This refined circulation of prana is possible because of our sophisticated system of breathing, which facilitates this process much as the pumping heart does for the circulatory system. Through the steady rhythm of inhalation, paraka, and exhalation, recta, the air and prana circulate within and between the physical and subtle bodies. The inhalation draws the prana to the center of our being, and with the exhalation, it journeys outward. All this happens within the breath's regular pattern of 16 times a minute. A slight hesitation, kumbaka, between the inhalation and the exhalation allows oxygen as well as the precious prana to be distributed. The changing patterns. Having two nostrils supports the flow of energy through pingala and ida. Although most of us are probably unaware of it, the lining of each nostril engorges and shrinks periodically during the day. This shifts the flow of air from one nostril to the other in a biological rhythm. Every one and a half to three hours, the pingala and the ida alternate dominance in hopes of restoring balance. Extreme heat or cold can also cause the nostrils to change or to switch dominance Allowing the air to pass through the right or left nostril produces a heating or cooling effect, respectively. Outside on a cold winter's day, even though you are not aware of it, your right nostril is fully open and desperately trying to heat the body. When the environment suddenly changes as you walk into an overheated room, your right nostril will occlude and the left one will go on duty. This alternating pattern becomes more obvious when you have a head cold that stuffs up your nose. Usually one of the nostrils opens just enough to let some air flow through. When both nostrils are completely clogged, we resort to using the only viable alternative, the mouth to breathe. All of our physical systems depend on the regular flow of air and of prana. If our habitual breathing patterns are upset or halted because of erratic movements in our body, the oxygen and energy requirements 
go up. If we suddenly run or quicken our pace, the breath accelerates, using up more prana. As we slow down, our breath follows. If our bodies can change our breathing pattern, then the opposite is also true. A deep breath revitalizes us when we are tired. When we observe how these variations in breathing change our breathing according to our daily functions and moods, pranayama becomes an essential practice in returning us to balance. Mental states affect the breathing pattern and also change nostril dominance. When we feel anger or passion, which are heating emotions, chances are our right nostril will be open. Depression or a sense of quietness may cause the left nostril to take over. At night, as the nostril dominance shifts, we turn from one side to the other. Whichever side we are lying on, the opposite nostril is open. If you nap in the heat of the day, the left nostril's vigilance allows you to rest deeply. If suddenly the phone rings, disturbing your sleep, the left nostril will engorge, causing the right nostril to release and allowing you to be present for the call. The body's consciousness is awake even when you are sleeping. The mind and emotions host millions of thoughts and feelings that are perpetually hungry for energy in order to move about the function. These thoughts and feelings respond to the same rhythmical relationship the breath has with the body. With a long, slow exhalation, they have room to spread out. The measured rhythmical pace allows them time to consider whether and how they will manifest. This is similar to the spacing of notes in music. The greater the spacing between the notes, the more relaxing effect the music produces. Awareness of the breath can boost the enjoyment and vitality of each moment of life. When a balance between the pingala and the ida is sustained over a period of time through various pranayama practices, the prana is then directed through the central nadi, the shashuma. This centers the mind and emotions, moving them toward the highest consciousness, samadhi. The universal life force prana is enhanced and guided through the harmonious rhythm of the breath, pranayama. The movement of life force is influenced by inhalation, exhalation, and sustained breath. Magnetize yourself toward balance and harmony. Taking a deep breath has the effect of combing our energy. When we visit the mirror after we wake up, we usually see that our hair is in disarray. We're unfazed since we're learning, since we learned early on that a strategically placed comb or brush could coax the hairs to go more or less in the same direction. Satisfied, we look and feel a bit more in control, at least of our hair. Breathing practices have the same effect on our energy field, our pranic body. With rhythmical breathing, we align and comb the energy. It becomes smoother, calmer, and more focused. This focused energy then acts like a magnet, attracting like polarities to us. In a plain piece of metal, all the molecules are in chaos facing each which way. A magnet is a similar piece of metal in which all the molecules are perfectly aligned. The North Pole's facing one way and the South Pole's facing the opposite direction. Because of this alignment, the magnet gains the power to attract and hold other ob objects. If you stroke the ordinary metal and the magnet together in one direction only, the magnet will align all the molecules in the plain metal with itself causing a second magnet to energize. The power to attract and hold has been transmitted from one to the other. While amazingly enough, the initial magnet retains its full strength. If you now take the two magnets and stroke them so the repelling poles are facing each other, 
the strength of each will diminish. The power to attract and hold is gone. We can see the benefit of being with those that support us rather than neutralize our power. Satsang. The universal life force prana is enhanced and guided through the harmonious rhythm of the breath. Pranayama. The movement of the life force is influenced by inhalation, exhalation, and sustained breath. As we align our energies in this way, through regulating the breath, we maintain calm through the ordinary emotional roller coaster rides we encounter each day. We find that when we are upset, everything around us reflects the same disturbance, as if it is somehow contagious. When tranquility prevails, it magnetizes everything with the same sense of calmness. Breath, mind, and emotions in harmony. Children allow us to see how our thoughts and emotions are linked with the breath. When they become frightened, their breath and speech patterns change. Often they will come running in breathlessly to tell us of some disturbing event that happened. The breath, trying to form words, tells us the child is upset. Mom, mommy, ha, 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 hick, ha, ha, sob. Sweetie, I can see you are very upset, but I can't understand what you are saying. Please calm down and tell me what happened. Meanwhile, your breath has become irregular as visions of a horrible incident fill your wild imagination. You want to be able to calm your child, but how? Embracing her, you softly kiss her forehead and say, sweetie, take a deep breath. Now let it out slowly. Again, good. Now, can you tell me what happened? Her words can now be understood because her breath is in harmony with her thoughts and emotions. Fortunately, the crisis was not as momental as you had imagined it to be. It rarely is. What you are witnessing and experiencing was the child's breath mimicking the pattern of her thoughts and emotions. The mind picks up the erratic flow of breath and begins to get more excited. Unaware that the mind itself was the cause of this irregularity. This then causes the breath to become more erratic, thus causing a cycle that is difficult to interrupt. The child was trying to tell you what happened, but she couldn't because her breath guided by the mind and emotions was too disturbed. The traumas of childhood have become everyday occurrences in adulthood. Our thoughts and emotions may be just as chaotic and upset, but we have learned ways to keep the stressful thoughts and feelings trapped inside, and from that, the greater disharmony manifests. Next time you find yourself agitated with daily irritants, notice your breath. Chances are you are taking in a breath, holding it, and then letting it out quickly. Take a moment and adjust the pattern. Have your breath flow in and out without hesitation or strain. The more upset you are, the more difficult this will seem. Stay with it for a minute or longer, and you will be amazed how the thoughts and feelings respond. The universal life force, prana, is enhanced and guided through the harmonious rhythm of the breath, pranayama. The movement of the life force is influenced by inhalation, exhalation, and sustained breath. Sutra 2.51, a balanced rhythmical pattern steadies the mind and emotions, causing the breath to become motionless. Sutra 2.52, as a result, the veils over the inner light are lifted. Sutra 2.53, the vista of higher consciousness is revealed. Pranayama's physical and mental effects have the supreme purpose of leading us into the stillness necessary for meditation. 
It is wonderful practice to be done immediately before meditation. Asana steadies the body. Pramana, pranayama aligns the mental and emotional patterns. We will then guide the senses through Pachahara, allowing us to focus and dive deep within. Through the continual practice of pranayama, the breath will understand that its workload has been greatly reduced. As the inhalation and exhalation slow, their stillness initiates the phase of motionless breath. It is a very natural and comfortable state, unlike the strained holding of breath we witness when upset. With a deepening in meditation, the prana, mind, and emotions grow still, causing a spontaneous stoppage of the breath. Kivala Kumbhaka. The prana moves inward, flowing through the shushumana to merge with the energy stored in the spine, kundalini, which then moves magnetically upward, propelling us to higher consciousness. The practice of pranayama slowly allows the veils covering our true self to lift. We are able to ascend unencumbered toward the light and merge with our divine nature. A balanced rhythmical pattern steadies the mind and emotions, causing the breath to become motionless. As a result, the veils over the inner light are lifted. The vista of higher consciousness is revealed. Experiencing a balance of the pingala, masculine, and the ida, feminine, through alternate nostril breathing. Please note, this breathing practice allows us to utilize the full lung capacity, taking in approximately seven times the amount of oxygen as in our normal shallow breathing. The chest muscles and the lungs may not be accustomed to such expansion, so be extra alert to any strain or dizziness. If you begin to get tired or short of breath, return to normal breathing for a few breaths, and then after resting, continue. This will help to build up your stamina without strain. Strain or stress actually depletes the life force, erasing many of the good effects from the breathing practice. This breathing practice is done in a comfortable seated position. It is a great practice to do any time to calm yourself or as a wonderful gateway to meditation. With the right hand, make a gentle fist and release the thumb, the ring finger and the little finger. This is a classic hand position in yoga, so-called Vishnu Mudra, sustaining seal. If it is comfortable, you can use the thumb and index finger. The thumb gently presses the right nostril closed while the left nostril remains open. Then the extended fingers gently close the left nostril and the thumb releases the right nostril. The left hand is resting comfortably on the lap. To begin, exhale fully through both nostrils. Close off the right nostril with your thumb and inhale slowly through the left nostril as you expand the belly and the lower lungs. Continue to inhale to the upper chest. Feel the collarbones rise slightly. Close off the left nostril with the fingers and exhale through the right nostril, releasing the air from the upper chest, the lower chest, and the abdomen. One section flowing into the other. Inhale through the right nostril, expanding the abdomen and lower chest, the middle chest and the upper chest, so that the collarbones rise slightly. Close off the right nostril with the thumb and exhale through the left nostril. Continue this pattern. Exhale, inhale, switch nostrils. Exhale, inhale switch. Begin to practice for one minute and gradually increase up to three minutes or longer. 
At the end of three minutes, as you come around to the right nostril, end with an exhalation. Allow the hand to come to the lap. Be still for a few moments with the eyes closed as you observe how calm and still the breath and mind have become. Observe the relationship between the two. Sutra 2.54, encouraging the senses to draw inward is Prachahara. Sutra 2.55, glimpsing the inner light, the senses contentedly dwell within. Prachahara is the subtlest aspect of Hatha Yoga. It is a prelude to meditation. Most meditation techniques begin by enticing the senses to draw inward, allowing the mind to follow. The five senses, or manas, encouraged by curiosity, ahamkara, link up with the intellect, buddhi, and coax us outward from our inner consciousness. Even before birth, the senses feed us enormous amounts of information for both survival and enjoyment. With time, if we engage exclusively in the outer sphere of the senses, our inner world is forgotten. Incredibly powerful, our senses expose us to the infinite spectrum of the universe. For thousands of years, we have been awed and humbled by the sun, the moon, and the night sky. By developing highly refined instruments, we observe the far reaches of the universe, which are merely the portals to the multitude of undiscovered worlds millions of light years away. Venturing outward into the cosmic universe has triggered a polarity that draws us deeper within, creating a passion for the miraculous workings of the human body. Traveling inward with the help of technology, we explore atoms, DNA strands, and subatomic particles that we have yet to meet. Persistent and in investigating both frontiers, we hope to learn the secrets to our existence. With spiritual maturity, our inward explorations go beyond the physical world to explore the mystical fields. This necessitates a relaxation on the grasp our outer senses have on the external world. Because of the degree of overstimulation or rahas in our modern society, this can be dif a difficult shift. Accustomed to going every which way to they please, the senses need to be cajoled as they rotate inward toward this new journey. If this overstimulation prevails on the inward focus, it stirs agitation and disharmony in our mind and emotions. This is why the onset of inward practice, some report that they feel less peaceful than before. But with continuous guidance from the yamas and niyamas, the senses grow calm. Encouraging the senses to draw inward is Prachahara. Glimpsing the inner light, the senses contentedly dwell within. The beauty of the subtle words draws us inwards. Gently enticing the senses to draw within often starts with our strongest information gatherer, the power of sight. More than 75% of information gathered from the external world is assembled from what we see. Redirecting the seeing to an internal focus encourages all the other senses to follow. Because we load so many visual images in our minds, we continue to see, even with the eyes closed. Often, students learning to meditate are coached to establish their inward gaze between the eyebrows to their third eye, or at the heart center. With this slow and gentle training, the mind will gradually relinquish its projection of previously imprinted visual images. Carefully choosing our, our outward images 
can help the inner vision to calm. Watching a visually frightening movie encourages the reflection of the same forces in our innermost worlds. At times, it might be difficult to know if the images have stopped stacked or temporary or permanent residency within your mind. For a deeper level of practice, you may choose to withdraw, even temporarily, to a simple place in nature that affords very little outward stimulation. As the sight firmly adheres to the inner world, the sense of hearing follows. Refining the level and quality of sound we regularly experience prepares us for the subtle internal sounds. The innermost melodies are orchestrated by the prana as it travels through the subtle nerve channels, nadis. We become captivated by the delicate hum or swish as it transforms into the celestial sound of bells, whispers, and choirs of angels. Developing extraordinary senses. The subtler senses of touch, smell, and taste join seeing and hearing in their quest for inner vistas. As the senses find comfort in their inward journey, the ordinary senses become refined and powerful. We have tapped into the subtle realm of extrasensory perception. What we then see is not physical. We hear what has not yet been said, smell what is not physical, smell what is not apparent, feel what we know to be true. These are some of the extraordinary powers described in the Yoga Sutras in Book 3, Vibhuti Pada, the divine manifestation of power. As the fruits of spiritual practice, a mother can often see what her child is doing even if the child is out of normal sight. Sometimes mothers are said to have eyes in the back of their heads because they see beyond the normal scope of vision. Moments before her death, St. Therese of Lissex, known as the Little Flower, saw a vision of Mother Mary surrounded by hundreds of roses. Although those pres present in the room could not see this vision, the overwhelming fragrance of roses permeated the room. From that day forward, anyone who prayed to St. Therese knew their prayers were heard when the unmistakable scent of roses enveloped the room. Encouraging the senses to draw inward is Prachahara. Glimpsing the inner light, the senses contentedly dwell within. Often we learn of situations in which someone was warned of impending danger by a voice not connected to a physical body. I experienced such a life-saving voice while camping by a lazy river in the Colorado mountains. Having pitched the tent and eaten our appetites fill, it was time to snuggle into our sleeping bags and be lulled to sleep by the sounds of nature. A river's voice can be the perfect lullaby. Not remembering drifting off to sleep, I was suddenly and quite rudely awakened by a voice loud and clear, get up right now, pull up your tent, collect all your gear, and head for higher ground. I peeked outside, and the moon's reflection on the water told my regular senses that everything was as it should be. But why did this voice wake me with such a message? Trusting that I was given this warning for a reason, I timidly woke my tent mate. More than a bit annoyed, she acquiesced to my empathetic rendition of the higher communication that I heard. We pulled up camp and spent the rest of the night restlessly sleeping in our car in front of a restaurant that was closed for the night. The next morning dawned clear and bright, and I was ready to concede defeat, accepting all the teasing I surely deserved. Eating breakfast in the restaurant, we overheard the other patrons talking with great concern about how last night the river rose and flooded out the banks. Sure hope no one was camping there, I heard several people say, as I said silent prayers of gratitude. Not only that I was warned, but that I had listened. Once asked by a keen student how she could develop her extrasensory perception, Sri Swami 
Sacha Dadnaji smiled and said, why would you want to take on extra when you have difficulty handling the ordinary senses you have now? If you invite these extra powerful senses, make sure you are strong enough to handle them. The external world will fail to amuse the senses as you create an extraordinary world within. Entice the senses inward by invoking a gentle light or flame. The sound of your heartbeat, the fragrance of roses, the sweetness of saliva, or a feeling of well-being. Find ways to see, hear, and feel beauty in the delicate world within. As the outward senses are calm, meditation becomes effortless. Encouraging the senses to draw inward is Prachahara. Glimpsing the inner light, the senses contentedly dwell within. Experiencing the senses and awareness drawing inward. This is a profound relaxation practice for bringing in all the outward sensual consciousness. We begin with the physical body, then move to the breath, thoughts, and emotions. Begin to take in a few deep breaths. Notice how still the body and breath become as they relax. Observe the breath without controlling it as it comes and goes without any strain. Guide this gentle breath to bring all sensual awareness from the feet, ankles, lower legs, knees, thighs, hips. Relax. Guide this awareness to withdraw from the fingers, hands, wrists, forearms, elbows, and upper arms. Let go of holding awareness in the hands and arms or shoulders. Relax. Do the same with the buttocks and pelvis. Allow the abdomen to soften. Imagine the chest, lungs, the heart, and the throat relaxed. Gently allow the awareness from the base of the spine to slowly rise up through the middle spine to the upper spine. Relax the shoulders and allow the neck to be an open connection between the heart and the head. Relax. Experience the sensations as body retreats. The head holds most of the organs of the senses. Gently relax the jaw and withdraw taste and speech from the mouth. Withdraw smell from the nose. Allow the eyelids and the eyes to soften, moving toward the inner sight. Relax the forehead and tune the ears to the inner sounds. Relax the entire scalp and bathe the brain with relaxation. Allow the gentle breath to relieve the mind and emotions of all movement. Relax. Slowly bring the awareness to the gentle breath as it enters and leaves the body. As it enters, feel yourself drawing deeper within. As it leaves, feel yourself letting go of all holdings. Notice a lightness and a feeling of distancing from the body, mind, emotions, and all worldly cares. Begin to go further within to look for that place of stillness, peace, and joy. This is the dwelling place of your divine self. Have five full minutes of quiet time. Slowly and gently bring the awareness back to the breath. Begin to increase the inhalation and feel that the senses have been purified and strengthened. Begin to feel them awakening to a relaxed body and a calm mind. As you continue with this practice, your senses will become accustomed to drawing inward. It will become effortless to prepare the mind and emotions for deeper practice. Okay, we are um, all done with the secret power of yoga for today. Um, and I just wanted to pop back over to let, uh, remind you guys that this week's reading of the um, You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay is going to be abbreviated. And you'll see why if you're on the video, but there's a whole list 
of uh, problems and then beliefs associated with those problems and then um, affirmations to reset those beliefs. So um, I'm going to read the chapter and then we'll talk about um, a few of these things uh, in today's recording. I'll read a few of them. But there's literally like 50 pages of different different things. So I am not going to be covering them all. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and switch over to the document camera and we'll get started. Okay. Um, we're on chapter 15 of You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay this week, The List. I am healthy, whole, and complete. As you look through the following list taken from my book, Heal Your Body, see if you can find the correlation between diseases you may have had or are having now and the probable causes I have listed. A good way to use this list when you have a good physical problem is, number one, look up the mental cause. See if this could be true for you. If not, sit quietly and ask yourself, what could be the thoughts in me that created this? Repeat to yourself, I am willing to release the pattern in my consciousness that has created this condition. Number three, repeat the new thought pattern to yourself several times. Number four, assume that you are already in the process of healing. Whenever you think of the condition, repeat the step. Oops. Let's start with something as simple as abdominal cramps as the problem, probable cause, fear, stopping the process. And then new thought pattern. I trust the process of life. I am safe. Maybe accidents, inability to speak up for the self, Rebellion against authority, belief in violence. And lastly, or and the new thought pattern, I release the pattern in me that created this. I am at peace. I am worthwhile. Um, addictions, running from the self, fear, not knowing how to love the self. I now discover how wonderful I am. I choose to love and enjoy myself. Allergies, like hay fever. Who are you allergic to? Denying your own power? The world is safe and friendly. I am safe. I am at peace with life. Maybe anxiety. Anxiety is a big one for a lot of us. Not trusting the flow and the process of life. I feel this one. I love and approve of myself and I trust the process of life. I am safe. Maybe appetite is the problem. For excessive appetite, fear, needing protection, judging the emotions. I am safe. It is safe to feel. My feelings are normal and acceptable. Loss of appetite. Fear, protecting the self, not trusting life. I love and approve of myself. I am safe. Life is safe and joyous. Maybe arthritis is a thing for you. Feeling unloved, criticism, resentment. I am loved. I am love. I now choose to love and approve of myself. I see others with love. Maybe there's back pain. Back, your back represents the support of life. I know that life always supports me.
loss of balance right here scattered thinking not centered i center myself in safety and accept the perfection of my life all as well and the list goes on maybe breath is a problem it represents the ability to take in life. I love life. It is safe to live. Maybe car sickness is a thing for you. Fear, bondage, feeling of being trapped. I move with ease through time and space. Only love surrounds me. And so on. And so on. And so on. The list goes on and on. How many things are we bringing on to ourselves? Let's see here, spasms, right? Sometimes we have muscle spasms, tightening our thoughts through fear. I release, I relax, and I let go. I am safe in life. Hmm. Let's do one more from the last page here. Maybe you have problems with your wrist. I know I do. Represents movement and ease. I handle all my experiences with wisdom, with love, and with ease. And for today's affirmation, I'm going to read. In the infinity of life where I am, all is perfect, whole, and complete. I accept health as the natural state of my being. I now consciously release any mental patterns within me that could express dis-ease in any way. I love and approve of myself. I love and approve of my body. I feed it nourishing foods and beverages. I exercise it in ways that are fun. I recognize my body as a wondrous and magnificent machine, and I feel privileged to live in it. I love lots of energy. All is well in my world. Thank you for joining us for this week's weekly reading, or The Secret Power of Yoga, excuse me, and you can heal your life. Namaste.